and welcome aboard, everybody, here to the Sports Talk Nation. We're going to do a video that, well, we knew we were going to do football at some point this week. We didn't think that it would be kicking off with this kind of video. Let's get into it. Okay, folks, as we all know, the word coming down early on Tuesday that Makai Becton's season is now over after he comes down with another knee injury, the second straight year in which he has injured his knee, a different injury than it was a year ago when he got injured in Week 1 against the Carolina Panthers. But nonetheless, it's a huge blow both for Becton and for the Jets. Uh, again, the diagnosis, not very good. The Jets did everything they could. They did, they did all the right steps. They checked the ACL. They checked the MCL. They saw there was no structural damage for that matter. So that's where the early diagnosis was. Maybe it's not that bad, but then when they got the second round of tests going, they found a, uh, the a fracture of the right kneecap, and that, of course, ends the season for Mikai Becton as he is now uh, done for the year. For, done for the year once again. Uh, it's unfortunate, again, as I said before, for Becton because here is a player who has really had a tough time of it trying to stay healthy and trying to stay on the field for the last couple of years. Uh, whether it be weight issues, whether it be concerns over health in general, of course, coming off the knee injury last year, and was challenged this past offseason by Robert Sala, by the Jets, to lose some weight, to get them to football to sh football shape. There were, of course, stories throughout the offseason about questioning his desire to play football for that matter. What we saw, though, what happened in training camp is we saw uh, Mekhi Becton, who came in motivated, who had lost some weight, looked great, and was playing great football at right tackle, had made the adjustment from left tackle to right tackle after losing his job to George Font, who was very impressive at left tackle last season for the New York Jets. So the Jet thought was, the thought for the Jets was at the time, of course, going into camp was, hey, we got a... a our right side of the offensive line now sit with our two young p players from the last two drafts with Makai Becton and Elijah Vera Tucker. Ideally, we'd like to have him on the left side of the offensive line. That's where we drafted him. But on the right side of the offensive line is fine for now. And they have the two veterans in Lakin Tomlinson and George Font on the, on the left side of the offensive line to protect the blind side of Zach Wilson. It sounded like a great plan. And it was a great plan. Unfortunately, when you have injuries like this, it throws a monkey wrench into everything, and this is a big monkey wrench into those plans for the Jets. It was really the health of the offensive line and how they would have congealed and worked together was really going to be uh, a big key in the season, and really Mekhi Becton bouncing back from missing all last year, quieting the naysayers, that was also going to be a big key in the storyline throughout the year. Unfortunately for him and unfortunately for the Jets, that's not going to happen. Now, am I going to sit here and speculate what's next for Mekhi Becton? I'm not because I have no idea. I have no idea. You hope for him, whether he's with the Jets or with somebody else, that he is able to resurrect his career uh, at some point down the road. But, of course, I'm sure there are a lot of naysayers, and I'm sure they're all over online saying, well, maybe, it's career, maybe that's the end of his career. Who knows? Hopefully for him, he can find a way back to the field at some point down the road. But for the Jets, they got to move forward and try to fix this offensive line. Uh, there's a lot of talk about Dwayne Brown, former Seattle Seahawk, potentially coming to the Jets. The Jets and Brown have shown mutual interest, as that has been reported. Uh, whether something gets done, you know, tonight or you know within the next day or within the within the week here, as the Jets get ready to take on the Eagles to start the preseason, we'll have to wait and see. But the Jets need some help on the offensive line in a big way. They signed a couple of guys to the team to try and get through this, but they need a veteran presence there. Uh, and someone like Dwayne Brown has five Pro Bowls, but he is at this point 37 years old. So there's the age factor as well you have to consider in this uh, when you consider bringing him over. But I think that's the guy that the Jets would like to get right? because he is available right now. Now, another big key here is we get and move through training camp and we get ready for this preseason game between the Jets and the Eagles. What are the things that we're all going to be looking for as Jet fans, uh, and people who may be on here, of course, the Jet writers, people who do channels like this on YouTube? What are we looking for? Obviously, offensive line was going to be a big storyline. Uh, and, of course, Mekhi Beckham was going to be a big storyline, but now that's uh, that, that storyline has taken a, a drastic change. The other big key, of course, is going to be development of Zach Wilson. And that's going to be the storyline not just throughout the rest of the summer, as it has been from the start of the summer, but throughout the season. And we've heard that he has had an up 
down kind of training camp so far. He's had some good days. He's had some great days, like he uh, did again in the green-white scrimmage where he was 12 for 19 for 100 yards and touchdown. Uh, the other day he was 8 for 8 in a, in a in a drill. So he's he's had some good days. He's also had some bad days where he's gotten knocked around a little bit, throw some picks. And there was even a story about six, seven days ago where Joe Flacco was outplaying Zach Wilson at one point and people were beginning to wonder, well, what does this mean? So it's been an up and down camp for Wilson, but we all know he's going to be the starter one way or the other when we get to the season. It's going to be how his development is and how well he continues to play at this position. It's going to really be the, the telltale sign of where the season's going to go. And now he has all these weapons, whether it be Tyler Conklin, CJ Uzama, uh, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, who needs to find if he can stay healthy this year. Braxton Berrios, who comes back on a two-year deal. And then in the backfield, Michael Carter and, of course, Brees Hall. A lot of weapons and a lot of speed for the Jets this year. And if all things go the way that the Jets would like to see happen this year, they could be one of the youngest and fastest offenses in the league this year. That's what they would hope to happen this year anyway. That's the potential they have. Whether it happens or not, we'll have to wait and see. So his development and how well he continues to prove for Zach Wilson and utilizes these weapons is going to be a big key. And we'll see if it starts to play out in the preseason games. Uh, another big key, that another big storyline key we're looking for, even just an inkling of, of what could be in this preseason, is going to be this defense. Uh, Ahmed Sauce Gardner, of course, being the headline. Didn't give up a single touchdown in college. What is he going to do transitioning to the NFL? Big, tall, lanky corner, but six foot three. Very hard. You never find those kind of corners, obviously. And he is, uh, uh, in a lot of ways, a diamond in the rough. At least that's what the Jet fans are hoping for. And hopefully, he will see how he does uh, against some of the better receivers in the league. We'll get a little bit of a taste of that in the preseason, obviously, but we'll get the big taste when we get to Week One against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and then the front se- front seven. In, in a quick, from what I've read about. Training camp so far, Quinn Williams, Quincy Williams have dominated the uh, have dominated up front. Carl Lawson has had a nice bounce back so far in camp, and hopefully the Jets can still see him, uh, you know, make a bigger, big uh, impact throughout the season as he's coming off of injury year from last year, so he is now back. And then you have Jermaine Johnson, who is now going to be in the mix as well, the rookie that the Jets picked up late in the first round, trade back into the first round to get. So there are a lot of pieces to this Jet team. A lot of interesting storylines. A lot of players are all kind of curious about how they're going to develop throughout the course of this season for this football team. And as I said, we'll get a little inkling here and there throughout the preseason, starting on Friday when the Jets take on the Philadelphia Eagles. But the biggest storyline, again, is this offensive line. It, a lot more videos coming up, folks. Of course, we are in the midst of the baseball season. Man, man, the Mets are playing great baseball right now. Of course, the Yankees are been up and down lately, but they've been playing great baseball as well. Both teams with identical records. And, we'll, of course, like and subscribe here. We'll get all that content rolling. Of course, football is beginning. I'm telling you, like and subscribe here to the Sports Talk Nation. We'll talk to you next time.